get up stand up stretch come on everybody on your feet rise up out of your seat or sit if that's what suits you who am i to tell you what to do but should you choose to continue to stand then let it all out and let's take a deep breath in and out I am Isaiah Mansour, and I am excited to be here. Where? Anywhere. And yet I choose to be here, so welcome. A tendency, a tendency for the paths of our lives to intertwine, and for so much to occur at the exact same time, for everything is happening all at once, living through the great simultaneous, and should it at any point be too much to bear, remember that nothing makes sense, so who cares? Thank you, welcome, and enjoy. social heretic with a voice muffled by mental rhetoric over analytic and regretting it extra click unimpassionable as a wet candle wick oppressed by two lips that prefer to be wet than spread and a nervous tick he sat there in the school chair blank stare yet reeling upstairs mentally behind the scenes thinking of the girl in green that he had seen and who had seen him toned out the class in his zone on his own wondering how she had known the name of someone so lame he was delighted by her hello it's been a long time since he felt so ignited but with his head in the clouds he could not hear the teacher calling upon him aloud he awoke to the sound of snap out of it and was proud to hear himself say i'm sorry i'm just happy today she wasn't mad just concerned never knew if this kid really learned kind gentle loving in nature, small, short, skinny in stature, mature beyond her age, one of the most compassionate creatures with the patience of a sage. Her son, her only one, was her blessing and she had not once come undone. Simultaneously, seven and eighteen, he was born before being fully formed mentally, a child that abided within a man that resided there under her care. Unacknowledged gold medal mother, any other would have fled her at her own hands been dead but she stood alone one night early on the father disappeared from their home feeling as though her she harbored no hatred feeling as though her challenge was sacred she embraced it and the look of joy on her students face made her want to do something good that day so she gave away some school supplies to the charity drive they ended up in the hands of a kid from the inner city never before have you seen a place so shitty the boy a young teen avoided being stopped and seen by 
high pushers peddling, meddling kids of addicts, bums, and skids, doing only what mommy and daddy did, but they were a bad influence, spreading indignant ignorance like influenza. This kid was out of place, he belonged in Mensa, but no jungle on earth was denser than the one cast in concrete slabs. Few were the haves, the have not shot them all and took what they had. He would have been just like them if it weren't for his drawing pad. He took out his disdain on the page instead of on his brain or through his veins, and it was not in vain, for there was a program in the projects of which he was a prospect. He could go to college if he won the art contest. At the big day, the judge chose his work, for he had been there before, and his exhibit exhibited exceptional progress. She was hooked, mentally cooked, his savior, a heroine on heroin, and had been since attending Wesleyan, but it didn't hold her back. Told her line tight, no slack, despite the fact that she was a smackhead, married with cans, kids, a mega mansion, white picket fence, yellow lab, and a closet full of skeletons and bad habits. But a successful art critic, she thought it hysterically hypocritical to pull a kid so pure from the sewer, and so did it. It was her first charity write-off, a couple thousand to some hood rat who needs that, and then write off to the publicist. It was a stunt, and she knew how to front, knowing that her readers would love to hear of a winner as a saintly little kid trapped in the hell of, uh, of sinners. And so the elation of being soon to be uh, smattered across the screens and magazines and impressionable minds of teens was cause for celebration. And so she meddled with her bloodstream. Not the best mindset for steering, she found herself veering to the right and in her car's line of sight was a young girl paralyzed, panic stricken by fright. The pedestrian might have died if the other guy was not there to quickly pull her aside in the quickest nick of time. The woman drove off into the night and he asked if she was all right. I'm fine thanks to you, she replied. They were two in the right wrong place at the right wrong time. She looked. He looked into her still scared eyes and felt his own shine. And she was eternally grateful for his quivering quick hands that had saved her life. They embraced long and tight. Shortly thereafter, they were calling each other mine. He made Cupid look bad on every day, including Valentine's. Movies, bouquets, dinners, singing in the rain. The king of cuddles and champion of dampening and staying up late discussing how fate could be so right and one twist of step could affect the course of their lives in a way that they would be happy about it. He thought it was beautiful how from a situation nearly so tragic could spark a love that seemed to be magic. One night years later they awoke to the smell of smoke and quickly fled their home. It seemed the kitchen appliance was on the fritz. Strange, a week or so ago they had someone over to fix a problem with it. After a thorough investigation it was determined that the thing had been rigged for burning the whole house to the ground. Fearing for his life and that of his wife, he gave the new station the name of the repair guy, and the story aired the next night. Fuck, this is bad. Dribbled out of the scraggly, cigarette-cocked mouth of an immature and volatile, riled up because he had been outed. He doubted not that the authorities were on to his awful plot. It was time to get away before he was caught. Struggling with these impulses for a long time now, he thought, I must set fires, I must make them burn, but how? And indiscreetly because he had to keep his mommy proud. So under the guise of repair, he would enter your lair and tamper with what was there until it was ready to blow. Then move towns, change logos, no one would know, and again, he was practiced, but this was bad, this was bad. So he took all that he had and put it into a bag and put that into a car. Bid his mother farewell and drove off far until he found a motel for rent. Being into arson meant he had no friends. Abandoned in his teens because no one seemed into anthills and magnifying glasses in between classes. So he was totally alone. But in that dark dingy room he felt like a king in his throne. Free fresh and new like his world grew without the confines of his mother's roof in the same room that 
he had had since youth and since he was already on the run he decided that he could destroy whatever he wanted just for fun in the third fire of the week he was caught fleeing the heat and chased out into the street where he would meet the police chief gun ready held steady it was a quick surrender and that night the officer was a hero to remember the next day the guys at HQ held the celebration as a token of their appreciation but during the peer pressured speech they could tell from his inflection that he was not glad or proud but sad and scared at how so much is happening all at once that it never stops that even if he could pause the clocks he would still be too late to change someone's fate it crippled him to think that people would work so hard to destroy what others would create he could not enjoy the day transfixed by the billions of criminals he would never catch and the billions more that would come after that it was too much a burden to bear and so after a moment of silence through bit lips he declared i'm done quit all he wanted to do was spend more time with his loved ones he and his daughter loved to chat a good girl who had her dad's back and he had hers she was concerned for him a lot a type of astronaut with no houston to call if there was a problem in peril he was his only option and so often she was scared because so deeply she cared that night they discussed life and how everything is happening all at once living through the great simultaneous and the paths people walk through it and what they choose and how they use it and how our effects connect and transverse the universe causing and uncausing rippling through it's because of me that this and that and you too and of how you are why how things are how they are they thought of what what you might do might do and it blew them away the last thing that he had to say was we know that what you do affects those around you more so than we may ever come to know so smile and wave and do your best to behave she took it to heart the next morning at school she saw a low tier peer and decided that today instead of a sneer she would say hello she didn't know if it would have an effect but if it did she would be why so why not she was wearing green and he was an apathetic social heretic with a voice muffled by mental rhetoric over analytic and regretting it to remind us of what we had forgot that life is good and life is great that life is just what we create clap along come on clap along happy thoughts like the front of your brain kissing the back of your eyes like infinite blue cloud the skies like a beautiful set of your beloved thighs like everything you do the dude abides like there's always someone there to say goodnight like everything you wear is 
ship tight like the ship is sinking but everyone on board makes it to the lifeboats and dolphins guide you all to the shores of a caribbean island never seen before where pina coladas grow on the trees you bend your knees 90 degrees and win the limbo contest like you were shot but you were wearing a bulletproof vest like hearing someone say i love you more and more each and every day like the buffet is endless like being on your favorite roller coaster or jumping into your favorite poster and going exploring like the rain is pouring and you wouldn't have it any other way like you outran the cops like you're tackled kidnapped and shackled but use a hairpin to pick the lock and escape like pretending to be your favorite superhero dancing around in a cape like discovering that doing the macarena cures cancer like it's the million dollar question and you know the answer like the sun is singing but the beach boys and parliament funkadelic has a gig on the moon like the amp goes up to infinity like you once were blind but now you see like you're so happy that you can't help but scream loud louder as loud as you can because you need the world to hear like if they could make ice cream out of beer like having the dog of your dreams or living the dreams of your dog food love play ball catch squirrel like it's a hot august day and beach is calling your name like you got an a like she said hey with two wise and a winky face like bears have a build a person shop and you're their best seller like you go to the bank and the teller tells you we don't use money we use love you can cash a kiss or check a hug like it's 2 a.m in an empty lot and you're riding in a shopping cart like you just won an art show with your kindergarten portfolio like skinny dipping in a waterfall or like you just caught them all like this list will never end like you're meeting a long lost friend and within a moment you're laughing until you cry again like riding a bike without the handlebars or catching fireflies in jars or being the first person on mars like it's the most beautiful sunset that we'll see in ten thousand years and you have someone to sit and watch it with and kiss in the first minute of night like no one knows what the word ugly means because they've never seen it like you're fluent in tap dance can translate to the robot in conversational tango like lenin doesn't need to imagine because it is so like you've never stubbed your toe like it's 106 miles to chicago we got a half a tank of gas a full pack of cigarettes it's dark and we're wearing sunglasses like you started from the bottom but now you're here and soon you'll be there and every full moon you turn into a wear party monster with an unquenchable thirst for raising the roof like you've worked so hard your whole life but never done a chore because nothing ever was a bore like you hold the all time I score like everything you touch is golden like pretending that the floor was molten lava like doing the hava magila like you could talk to animals and all they have to say is how great you are like living the life of Walter White but as an up and coming rock star without any drugs or violence and your family loves you now more than ever like you smell so many roses that ferris gets jealous like the x-ray exposes that elvis lives on in your heart pelvic thrusting along to its beats like ding dong ditching and running into the streets like swinging i want you all to feel like you're swinging and you're clutching the ropes or chains your hopes and you just want to swing higher harder and faster until nothing else matters i miss the way that felt Woo!